What's happening folks? Scott here. We are going to start with the mixing portion of this video. Now, I asked on my Facebook um, how I should upload these videos because, like, for example, this first part of the video you're watching right now is actually part of a 40-minute video. And I was just like, well, 40 minutes is a bit long. We can't be doing that. So I'm just going to break these up into, like, 15 sec- uh, not second, 15-minute chunks or whatever makes the most sense, and I'll upload them like that. So what you just saw me doing there uh, with the master bus, where it says limiter all the way on the right, is I went minus 12 dB. This is basically how I gain stage the whole session so that I do not clip anything ever. Uh, it's really great. Uh, in, in Sonar here, all I got to do is pull down the gain knob. In Pro Tools, you got a trim plugin, I believe. Uh, a Reaper, also a trim plugin, actually. And Studio One, you have the mix tool. So you can do it in all the DAWs that I've worked with, you can do it. So what I'm doing now is I'm setting up the session to mix. Obviously, we need some kind of guitar tone to do that. I did decide to use Kazrog by, uh, oh, Kazrog, the Duality 3, which is a Mesa du uh, triple rectifier uh, emulation. I ultimately decided on that over Spark. I just, you know, thought a Mesa chain uh, would be beefier, would, would have a nice rhythm tone to it. So I'm using the oversized cabs, which are the Mesa cabs, the Recabinet 5 version. So I'm going to set up all the rhythm parts here so that we can um, have something to mix. And here I'm just uh, derping around with the tone a little bit. I already knew kind of the sound I wanted to go. I'm going to lower the gain because when you have uh, quad track guitars, you, you can't have so much gain because it's going to stack. It'll be cumulative, so you, you want to watch yourself on the gain. Bass, mid, treble... It's subjective. Uh, it'll most likely be tweaked as we go on through the mix. Same with the presence here. Typically, you know, I'll just I'll uh, mess around a little bit with the clean settings with with the overdrive pedal, just to kind of see you know what what I can get. But I'm gonna switch it here to the red channel, the modern red, and then we'll get some really sick distortion going on here in a second. So I will be using a gate while I'm mixing, and then at the end of it, I'll go ahead and manually gate these, you know, with splitting phase myself. But right now with the with the gate, it's just there to make it less annoying when I'm mixing and trying to think of something else. There's nothing inherently bad about a gate, actually. Uh, I just sometimes, if you, you know, like the really technical genty type stuff, you know, like gates are not the best choice because they, they make the palm music and stuff sound pretty uh, artificial. But in this case, it's only the beginning of the song. I may just keep the gate, I don't know. It does sound pretty natural. That is one thing I've noticed about the Kazrog plugins is they are really hot. So I typically always have to knock them down at least 6 dB. Uh, maybe it's something with Sonar, or maybe it's in all DAWs, I have no idea. But I always have to knock them down at least 6 dB. Again, twiddling with the settings here really doesn't matter, I'll be changing them later on. Gonna move them all over now, all the gates. I'm gonna have the uh, duality three and all the channels. Now I was curious, uh, like for the 80% pan, if I had just the SM57, and then for the 100% pan, I had just the SM57 off axis. I ended up not liking how that sounded, so I have the SM57 paired with the SM57 off axis for all four guitar parts, and you'll see that here in a second. I'm just not liking the way that sounds. It sounds really grainy and the, I don't know, I just didn't like it. So, all four the same. 
Yeah. Much better. Well, gain staging the guitar bus, which is necessary because it's pretty hot. Saving. Now, after the rhythm guitars, honestly, we could already start mixing, but I wanted to see what the levels were like with the rhythm and the lead guitars. So I brought in everything for the lead guitar here. And this is where I realized, oh, I need to change the settings. And I do the classic uh, 666 tone. So bass 6, mid 6, treble 6, present 6. I don't know about presence, but just the classic 666 tone. I also decided to change the cab here to have a um, 121 which I thought would help differentiate the tone a little better um, instead of all of the mic being the same. Actually, another thing that's helping the tone sound different, actually, it's a completely different guitar than what I used to record the rhythms, which you learned all about in the lead guitar video, which was an interesting experience. Just testing the levels. I'm gonna do some fader mixing here just to sort of get an idea of what the balance is and what everything sounds like. Again, I'm still playing with the idea here if I should have my mix bus gain staged or not. Um, ultimately, I will not do this because I wanna have the, uh, the level going into the compressors and such on the mix channel bus. Uh, not really to be at optimal optimal level, so I'll probably gain stage it in the future, but not like by a set amount. So I'm really liking how the bass guitar uh, works with the rhythm guitars here. I'll be uh, carving that out a lot more once we get to that part of the mixing stage. Yep, so just a quick better mix to see how everything would sit together. And to me, everything's pretty clear. You can hear everything quite nicely. So. Alright. So let's get started working on the drums. A little funny thing happened here. I'm confused because I'm like, wait a minute, where does this fade come from? And you can hear that the it, this got split and moved somehow. I don't know how it happened. It's just a little millisecond off the grid. Move it back. And we're good now. But that was weird. I don't know how that happened. So uh, the process I'm going to follow is pretty much the same as what you saw on the base processing video that I uploaded, you know, a while back. It's going to be basically EQ, the same one that you saw, because it's a it's a preset. You know, once I find an EQ that I like that works for me, I pretty much just keep the preset, as you can see here. Boom, preset. Uh, move right away to the uh, Transify, which is the transient designer. I used the minion in the video uh, that I put uh, up recently, but I'm going to actually use Transify here. And again, a transient designer, designer just makes it sound like the drummer is hitting harder. That's all. So there's that little extra bit of attack there that you can hear. And after that, we just clip it. Now, clipping is not limiting. Okay. Clipping, it just raises the gain of the transient. Also, but does not allow it to actually clip. So it raises the volume, saturates it, distorts it a little bit, works really well on drums. 
So the exact same thing that I showed you in the video is actually how I do my drums, my kick drum at least. So no lies, folks. So with snare drums, uh, it's, these are also pretty simple. You just basically want to, the first thing that you hear that annoys you is what you want to take care of. After that, maybe one or two extra moves. But if you go crazy on your snare, you're going to kill it. Now I'm going to do a quick trick with our bass. I'll explain it afterwards. So the our bass actually changes the fundamental note of the snare. And in this case, uh, takes it away from 200 and thickens it at about the 170 range and it makes the snare just that much thicker. Really fat snare sound. So the same thing happening here with this snare. This is the secondary snare. Taking out the things that annoy me at first. And then we'll do the exact same thing. From here, I am going to load the REQ, and I'm going. Cause you you want to do a filter when all with the multiple snares are on the same bus, because that way you won't create a bump in the EQ phase and a little bit of a shelf actually. So at the REQ two, I'm doing 100 hertz filter on both snares at the same time. Transify same thing, making the drummer just hit harder. Got to be really careful here because you can make the snare just, you can really choke the life out of it. So I'm pretty subtle with transient de designers actually. Some people are wor not worse, but more heavy handed. The so same thing with the clipper. At this point, I'm more or less trying to get the snare drum to work well with the kick. Like that they sound like they belong together at the same drum set. Sounds pretty good, like that. Already got kick and snare going. They so can hear the difference with our bass on and off. Definitely a thicker sound. Now, this is a great thing to do with SSL channels. Um, really great plugins to have. Uh, this this high frequency right here, man. This is basically the sound that I love. how much brightness and just air it adds to that and now we need to compress it i usually go from three to six db depending uh it's really important to check your compression settings when the song is faster if you got blast beats you need to check your snare drum during the blast beats honestly a lot of people say that you can automate this 
you know, you can automate your compression settings based on the tempo or the beat on the song, which is true. I guess I'm a bad person for admitting that I don't automate my compression settings. So I'm going to go to a blast beat and check what the compression is doing with my snare. Now, did you hear anything? You should be noticing an extra frequency and I'm looking for it right now. So it's around the 800 hertz region, but for SSL channel, it's not gonna be the uh, EQ that I'm looking for. So I'll go to Q10 and I will kill this doing sound. Major difference. That SSL channel is really the major difference here. That's going to cover it for the first part of these three. Well, I shouldn't even call it three. That's going to cover it for this bit. As I said, 15 minute chunks or the most logical chunks. I think that'll be the easiest to digest. So we got the kick and the snare out of the way. In the next video, right away, we're going to start with the toms and continuing on with the drums all the way through to the drum room, the plates, the reverbs. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll maybe in the next video, we'll see what I'm doing with the, the parallel compression. If this is a cool series and you like it and it's helping you out, consider a like and subscribing and hit that bell sig hit that bell symbol, the bell symbol, to get email notifications, all right? Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.